ASU Gamage is celebrating its 60th anniversary this year. The Frank Lloyd Wright Design Building is a landmark on the Tempe campus and has been the site of a number of major events over the years. Colleen Jennings Rogensack is the executive director of ASU Gamage, and she joins us now. Oh, it's always good to see you. Ted, it is wonderful to see you, and thank you for having me back again. You bet, you bet. Okay, 60 years for Gamage. 60, yes, 60 years. 60 years, and the really frightening part about that is over half of those years, I have been the executive oh director at Gamage. When did you start? 1992. Gamage was birthed in 1964 with our first performance by the Philadelphia Orchestra, Eugene Normandy. President Gamage and Frank Lloyd Wright met in about 57. They were dear friends. And President Gamage said, this is a university that demands a great performing arts center. And Mr. Wright went, well, it just so happens I have these plans in my hand. And those plans were for like in, in Iraq, weren't for they? For Baghdad. The Baghdad Opera House is where they would have been. And King Fazl II was deposed. And so we had available plans. Mr. Wright and President Gamage walked the grounds of Arizona State University. Mr. Wright put his stick, walking stick in the ground and said, here, we will build a great universe, a great performing arts center with open arms that says, welcome to Arizona. And it happened to have been the women's athletic fields. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Was it always a curve like that? Or it, was, was it the curve because of Gamage? No, it has always been the curve. And we have a historic curve on the street curves, and that's a historic Gamage curve. Mr. Wright didn't believe in, pardon the pun, right angles. Yes. So everything is built on a musical scale. And so it is the big orange birthday cake. Oh, that's amazing. Talk to me more about the building itself, because th there are quirks in there that I think would surprise everyone. How many different shades of terracotta do you <laughs> think are in this building? I mean, I, ca I can't even begin to guess. 57. Fif you counted 57? 57. 57. And, and there are no really, there are a lot of curves, not a lot, a lot of right angles. A lot angles. of curves, everything from when we uh, lay the carpet down. And the carpet, when I first came here, was one solid color. And uh, quite realistically, people could not delineate the stairs. So there was a lot of Ooh, dripping going oh no. on. Yeah. And so I said, well, what we need to do is have delineation. I was invited to go to Mr. Wright's closet in Taliesin, I chose one of his ties, and that pattern that you see on the floor there oh, is the wow. pattern from one of his ties. Isn't with the colors, Isn't with the exact so color scheme, very desert color scheme. Most of the building is exactly as it was in 1964, with a few exceptions. One of those exceptions was when you came in, there were stairs straight across. So it meant anyone with accessibility yeah. issues could not get in. So we added ramps. Then we said, you know, we're going to have shows and big shows. And that first big show was Phantom of the Opera. My 1994, so it was my second season here. And that chandelier, yes. as, as wonderful as this building was, it wasn't weighted enough to, ha to hang. So there's a little tiny hole in the ceiling, and I call it my three quarters of a million dollar hole. Oh my goodness. Because we had to reinforce oh the I beams to hang that. Wow. You know, so we've done a series of things to make the building live longer than the 50 years Mr. Wright thought it should exist. You, did he really think it should? He really did. What was that all about? Um, he believed all of his buildings should last 50 years and fall down. He didn't, of course, realize how much it would cost to replace yes. them. Yes. So we have done some marvelous things. And if you look on that curve on the bottom, I hope everyone's seeing this picture, those are duets. There used to be curtains there Southern exposure, we know what that does. Yes. We were replacing curtains every six months. So those are duets. And the beautiful thing is if Mr. Wright was alive, he would say, look how much it shows off the architecture inside and out and then protects that as, as well. As far as the architecture is concerned with perform, what do performers who have never been here before, what is their reaction? Okay, I'm going to tell you a wonderful story. We had a Frost Nixon, which was a play, and the company manager had everyone sitting on the stage, and he said to them, this is a marvelous building, and this marvelous building houses some of the greatest theatrical pieces in the world. I want you to explore the building absorb the building and give it back to us in your performance. Wow. It was and it was a marvelous performance. Oh. Stacy Keach was in that. Still interesting, yes, interesting. Yes, yes, but yes. but it, the acoustics people are there curiosities yes. there? Well, first of all, we have 
many, many people come not to see those fabulous shows because thousands and millions of people come, but come to just tour the building. Oh, interesting. Neither Mr. Wright nor President Gamage lived to see the building completed. So Wesley Peterson completed the building. The, the um, sound, the acoustician, was Kierkegaard. And it was designed to be an opera house. So, of course, we have a lot of electronic things. So there are many things that we have done which deal with the sound in the building. And I want to let everyone know <laughs> that when a show comes in, they bring their own sound system. So we always have to, like, back up a little and say, of course you know what you're doing, but allow us to tell you how this building can sound the best. And you've had to do some expansion just to get some oh, of this equipment in, we, correct? We have, we have put more than $3 million into sound. And we've also, there's an area where we hang curtains, they're called blacks, mm -hmm. and we hang them from the back of the house because the balconies are not adhered to the wall. So the grand tier and the balcony are not adhered. So sound comes up and goes around and comes up and goes around. Instead of in most theater, it's the wall and comes back at you. So it's a little, she's a temperamental beauty. Yeah. Well, and you know, I was going to ask about that. Yes. I mean, you've been there so long and it's, it, this, this is your baby. Here. It's my this, baby. It's your baby. Yes. I mean, do you, I mean, when you see it and when you think it, does it feel like, I mean, that's you. I You're know, looking at does. your life there. It does. And um, President, our own President Crow will say, on your tombstone, it will say, she brought women's bathrooms. To <laughs> and we both joke about that. But literally, because it was the Baghdad Opera House, because women were going out, there were 21 facilities for women and 45 for men's thrones. We now have 118 for women. See, there you so, go. That's so that's one, one of the little things. And, uh, and again, when we talked about there were no elevators, Itzhak Perlman came to perform, Ooh. and he could only get into the building walking down the loading dock. And oh. I said, well, that can't be. No. So we put our first elevator in, and then we put subsequent other elevators. Well, Colleen, uh, again, uh, executive director of that beautiful building, you're, you're a beautiful spirit. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Well, and I hope people will come and see us because the first week in December, we opened Kimberly Akimbo, the same producer who did Wicked. Notice my nails. Yes. These are my There's Wicked your green, nails. Your green, yep. I'm going to tell everyone a little secret. I saw the perfect private screening a month ago of the show with Ariana DeBose, oh, yes. Ariana, and with Cynthia. And we're talking about that movie. We're going to get a movie review on that tomorrow. <gasps> yeah. Colleen, it's good to have you here. Thank you.